Good evening, what's going on there folks? It is Earthmaster here jumping in on this beautiful Friday evening party night. It is uh, August 20, 2021, about uh, 9.47 p.m. West Coast time. Yeah, it's a little late. Kind of just uh, enjoying the evening here in Northern California. Uh, looking at the latest earthquake on the globe, a 3.0 just struck out in Hawaii. Quite a bit of earthquake movement taking place globally. Uh, looking at the USGS map shows us that movement uh, 2.5 and above for the states and the territory area Quite a bit of movement uh, in the South Sandwich Islands once again seems like uh, Well looking at it looks like maybe a little bit less compared to days past But we're still seeing quite a few fives kick up and also some deeper movement into the subduction zone um, down in that region looking at the South America area up into the Peru Chile Trench, some deeper movement around Peru at 165 kilometers for that 4.3. A little bit shallower quake at the surface at 24 kilometers for a 4.2. Um, Puerto Rico, what's going on out here in the Puerto Rico area? Seeing a little bit of uptick and a little bit closer to the Puerto Rico Trench, which is not good. Haiti over here looking at some aftershock activity. Uh, let's see what they've been looking at as far as the last seven days go. Of course, that includes that uh, uh, devastating 7.2 that struck there in Haiti uh, a couple days ago. They've had uh, some pretty uh, decent-sized aftershocks. It looks like a 5.8 being the largest in that uh, little sequence there. And a little bit further away from the main quake uh, by, uh, oh, there's like about 25 miles or so. Uh, so moving over here towards the Puerto Rico area, this here has me just a, just a little concern here. Of course, Puerto Rico Trench, a uh, major player in possibly producing some mega quakes out here. Uh, I don't think we've seen it yet, but there's definitely uh, some studies about this area and the buildup of stress and the potential for a, a pretty large quake in this region. Little earthquake over here, 3.8, some deep movement. Uh, looks like... Uh, Southeast Dominican Republic area. Uh, what is that? La Romana? La Romana. La Romana. Is that it? Hopefully. Um, yeah, just, just off the coast there, 186 kilometers. Pretty deep movement. The area up here around the Puerto Rico Trench seen some, a little bit of quake activity in the mid to upper three level and about 26 kilometers or so, 23 kilometers for some of that quake activity stretching down into the Puerto Rico trench area. Kind of watching that area for uh, uh, for some further movement. Southwest area of the Puerto Rico area, not uh, nothing big. Last night there's a little bit more active. Um, tonight, or at least over the last 24 hours, not, uh, not uh, too active there. So, sorry, I was looking at something that came across my phone. Um, Oklahoma, a little bit of movement there. Let's go ahead and add the all magnitude so we can see what's going on. Uh, looks like a little explosion around uh, Tulsa area, probably a query blast. Yep, query blast. And some movement around Quinton, 2.3 and a 2.9 striking in that area. Also ac activity in the Pecos, Texas region. A little on the uptick today. A few earthquakes uh, in the low to mid two-pointer uh, range. East Coast, pretty quiet, uh, not a whole lot of movement over there. No further movement around the New Madrid area. West Coast, though, looking uh, pretty active, all the way up to Washington, Yellowstone, stretching down kind of in a uh, in a little pattern here. If we had the Canadian um, geological activity up here, we would probably see that stretch all the way up here too. Um, but the USGS not showing it. Let's go ahead and check out Utah real quick. Little swarm of activity southwest of Richfield. Um, some deeper movement too. Kind of odd. A couple looks like 2.8 being the largest quake so far, which would put all these other ones uh, as aftershocks. We'll have to keep an eye on this region pretty closely. Uh, down here around the Southern California area, had some movement around the Salton Sea, uh, south of Mexicali area, uh, 2.5. Uh, it's, like I said, Salton Sea area, seeing a little bit of activity. Westmoreland at a 1.3. Some further activity up and down the uh, San Jacinto Fault area. 
Overall, no major swarms taking place. A little bit of movement right smack dab on the Garlock Fault Zone. A 1.5, 7.5 kilometers there below the surface for that. Ridgecrest seeing a little uptick in earthquake activity. Aftershock sequences from a couple years ago from the uh, pretty good sized quakes that struck there. And the, uh, what do we got? Antelope Valley area as well. You notice that uh, sign of increasing pressure up here and down there in the fracture zones where they've already had large earthquakes. Kind of a, a sign of uh, further inland increase in pressure along the North American plate here. That includes the areas of Nevada as well. Seems like these uh, three earthquake areas that got struck by, uh, when Nevada had like a 6.2, I believe, last year. Maybe the year before that. And of course, uh, the Antelope Valley area had some, uh, some uh, good earthquake activity recently. And then the Ridgecrest um, area, all seen uptick in aftershock uh, sequences there. Into Northern California Coast Range uh, 2.1 near Alder Springs. And a little bit of activity up north of Mount Lassen. Pretty good distance, so about five, uh, eh, seven miles or so. A 1.1 striking up there. The Cascadia subduction zone. We're looking at some deeper movement into this area of the Cascadia uh, zone along the Northern California coastline, a 3.2, pretty deep, 24 kilometers. And then uh, followed up about 45 minutes later by a shallower 2.9. Still watching this area. I mean, we're getting, uh, getting some pretty good deep quakes in this area recently for the past several weeks. Uh, quite a bit of buildup along the Cascadia mega thrust zone into a Washington area a little bit of movement around the Mount St. Helens area looks like maybe one potentially right smack dab on the summit or within the crater of the summit just some microquake activity point two and some movement up around Mount Rainier as well there's some further activity along the uh, Seattle fault zone this one's been uh, uh, kicking up quite a bit of uh, movement over the last we can grab all magnitudes here over the last week, most of this activity relatively deep as well. Today, just two earthquakes, but uh, there's that deep movement, 22 kilometers and 15 kilometers for those micro quakes. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, seeing a little bit of activity. We did have a, uh, oh, not a huge one, but a somewhat of a sizable one, right? 3.1 happened... Uh, well, here's Yellowstone Lake. They got this set at 19 kilometers northeast of West Yellowstone. When you add the all magnitudes map here, kind of shows uh, a little bit further aftershocks following that uh, 3.1 earlier today. Looking at the Yellowstone seismographs, let me go ahead and refresh that. Uh, there we go. Shows that 3.1 up here. This is going to be that 3.1 um, northwest area of the park, followed up by... Uh, quite a few aftershocks, a lot more aftershocks than what's showing on the USGS um, map. May possibly have triggered a start of a swarm. We'll have to keep an eye on it pretty closely. It looks like there was a little bit of activity prior to that 3.1 as well. That one in the blacker line, um, about 1630, darker line there, 1630 UTC time before that 3.1 struck. So we'll keep an eye on that. All areas of the park look pretty decent. No strange recordings. Um, no magma intrusion. No magma movement, at least according on uh, at least according to these maps here. Uh, what else we got here? Let's shoot around the globe a little bit. Alaska seeing a little bit of movement up here as well, right along the Aleutian Trench into the uh, the Aleutian. Um, islands area 3.8 was pretty deep here about 31 kilometers down into the dip and nothing major just just some average earthquake activity some movement north of uh, Japan as well along the uh, uh, Karel Kamachaka Trench 107 kilometers pretty deep movement here for that 4.2 also a little bit of further movement off the coast here of South Korea and the Yellow Sea. Uh, 4.6 at 10 kilometers, relatively shallow for that earthquake. Movement through the Indonesia area and also down through uh, 
Vanuatu and the Fiji Islands where check this out man I tell you what the 4.3 632 kilometers whoo it's like it's like this is where it all starts you know it's like it this is the starting point of deeper earthquake movement and uh, it just goes from there around the globe so looking at this map you're definitely on a heightened um, earthquake path over the last 24 hours uh, and it looks to be uh, globally for right now I have to keep an eye on certain areas of course I'm still kind of watching the west coast and the uh, east coast of Japan area but then again we could have big ones anywhere anywhere it wants to happen right anywhere we're looking at uh, quite a bit, a bit of build up of stress uh, and the most uh, well the one that wants to let go the most I guess uh, 4.3 over here around Tajikistan, Tajikistan, Tajikistan. I can't remember which one's right. 130 kilometers for that 4.3. Let's check out the trimmer map here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm, wow, actually a little active tonight compared to the past couple nights where it's been zero. So we're seeing some movement up here around the Vancouver area, the northern part of the Cascadia, and also a return of... Uh, trimmer into parts of uh, Oregon only about uh, 36 36 epicenters here nothing big but uh, definitely good to see some activity ramping up uh, once again there solar activity pretty quiet uh, sea flares have been popping off from a certain sunspot here kind of a uh, kind of a distant sunspot on the other side, kind of the far side of the sun. It will be rotating towards us over the next several days. Um, yeah, it's been uh, popping off a number of B flares and low level C flares, uh, which were detected today. We'll get a better look at this active region during the next 24, 48 hours. So looks like at least 35% chance of a C flare. Here's the latest sun, sun image. You can see that uh, solar activity area that we're kind of watching. Chrono hole popping off here as well. You can see that filament. That's pretty well defined. And uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, the sun just looks like it's stirring up a whole bunch of stuff here. This whole area looks like a swirl of activity. That's pretty wicked looking. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to jump off here. I think that's about it. Not a whole lot uh, other stuff to cover. Just uh, play it safe. Hope everyone enjoys their weekend. I'm watching some activity up here in the northern part of Alaska. That's kind of odd. It's zero kilometers, 2.7. Alrighty, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. Peace out. We will chat you guys another time and uh, have a good one.